Hello, my name is Benjamin Resendiz, and today I will be talking about the banjo for my URI Writing 104 Maker Badge. I will be talking about the history of the banjo, the activism around it, and how I made one. So without further ado, here is my presentation. Thank you. So this is the banjo and its problematic origins. So the banjo is an instrument that um, that spreads many genres, including uh, country, musical theater, folk, and even genres like jazz, metal, and hip hop. It's a uh, two chains right there. Um, so the history of the banjo begins way back in uh, Gambia, West Africa, and it starts with an instrument called um, oh wait, sorry, some famous banjo players. It starts with an instrument called the accounting. So that's that's an accounting playing. Um, so it was made with a gourd body. Um, it was made with a gourd body. Um, it had uh, animal skin for the head, and it was tacked on. Um, and then they just used a single, almost like a broomstick or a dowel, um, and they kept it on with either. Uh, leather rings on this one, or uh, mechanical tuners on that one. That's a bit of a newer one. So, the banjo does come from Africa, and all these things have transferred from to, the, uh, to the modern day banjo, except for the leather rings. So the banjo comes from Africa, um, and it came to America, and the way it did that is it did that through uh, slavery, actually. So, during the North American slave trade, I'm just gonna put this down real quick. During the North American slave trade, uh, the enslaved people of America created the banjo um, as a way to pay homage to their ancestors and to try to entertain themselves and have some form of joy uh, during the horrors of being enslaved. Um, it's documented as early as 1785. Um, that right there is a painting called The Old Plantation, which was made about 1785, um, and you see a guy right there playing a gourd banjo. Um, people dancing. They're having a go uh, gale time. There's like a drummer over there or something. They're having a pretty good time. So, yeah. So the first types of banjos that were created were the gourd banjos. So these banjos, um, they were the first banjos. So they took the akonteng, they made it shorter, um, they flattened it out a little bit. Uh, that's what I'm playing right now. Um, they had three to five strings. Sometimes they had more, but not often. Sometimes they did have less. Um, they usually didn't have the fur on them anymore. Some of the accounting still had the fur. Um, and they didn't use leather rings anymore. They now use tuning pegs. Uh, most of them were just wooden tuning pegs that you would find on a standard violin or cello um, because they didn't have mechanical tuning pegs yet. So after the gourd banjo, uh, the next type of banjo to be created was the minstrel banjo. So this is the first, is it not gonna play? Hold on, I had music for this. Okay, so this is uh, the first banjo to create a standard tuning. Um, it's also the first banjo to have a standard amount of strings, which is five, which is the same we use today. Um, it, did, it no longer used uh, taps, and it used uh, tension hoops and hooks to keep the, um, the skin taut. Um, and I have there, it says neck shape was meaningful. What I mean by that is the, there's, you can see the indents on the neck and the shape of it. And so that was meant to tell the player how far they were up the fretboard, almost as, uh, cause they didn't really have frets at the time. So it was just so they knew without having to like listen. Um, this is also where bluegrass began. Um, the very upsetting part about this though, is that this was, as the name implies, um, used in minstrel, sh minstrel shows, which is a um, really just gross practice where white people would uh, paint their faces and portray racist caricatures of black people um, in old America. So, yeah, problematic origins. Um, so, again, oh my god. So next we go to the modern banjo. So now it has, turn this up, the jam. 
Now it's got metal strings, it's got frets, you can see the frets, uh, you get the resonator over there, a bunch of different types. Um, we have now reached bluegrass, as you can tell. This is Foggy Mountain Breakdown. Um, that right there is Bella Fleck. He actually has an electric banjo, which is pretty cool. Um, he actually, his signature banjo that you can buy for is $22,000. Yeah, there's a violin playing, but yeah, so that's the modern day banjo. There's a lot of different types, so we're gonna talk about some of those types now. So, there's a bunch of different types. You can see, again, okay. We're just gonna click it, nope. Okay. This is difficult. Um, so as you can see right there, there's. Oh, I can see this. Uh, right here we have the uh, banjo lele. It's like a ukulele, but it's got a banjo body. That's what most of them were. Uh, this is a mandolin, but it's got a banjo body. This is a bass banjo, which is what you're listening to right now. Um, this right here is a tenor. This right here is a tenor banjo. It's used a lot for jazz and for Irish folk music. And this up here is a banjo guitar, which is just like a guitar with a banjo body. That was used a lot in recordings because people didn't want to find banjo players, so they just gave this to a guitar player. Yeah. So, um, next we have the interview. So, it took me so long to find someone to interview because there's no banjo specialists in Rhode Island. And the banjo specialists that are out there there's a lot of them who are, because the banjo came from down south, and a lot of them are a little, um, how can I put this? Will not acknowledge the true origins of the banjo, and I didn't want to interview someone like that. So I actually ended up going to my dad, who he plays a lot of stringed instruments, he knows a lot. So I ended up doing an interview with him. So. Steve Rizendi, string like instrument, that. extraordinary. Um, probably I started taking lessons in the sixth grade, so I'll date myself. That was probably 1980 or so. Uh, my uncle, uh, Manuel, he played in a uh, like a big band <coughs> called the South Sea Islanders. They're out of Portsmouth, Rhode Island, and I had. In my possession, he gave it to my other uncle, David, who then eventually gave it to me. It was an old German nickel um, Hawaiian slide guitar. That guitar is so sick. I, I played turned it on to that first, and then I got my first acoustic from Woodland Music in Tiverton, Rhode Island, when I was in the sixth grade. And then I took lessons from a local guy, Walter Scott, who was very well known back in the uh, 60s, 70s. Um, and then from then on, I just kept playing. I've purchased other many guitars. Um, I just have a uh, drawn to the stringed instrument, I guess, with the sounds it makes and the melodies, things you can do with it. Good to know. Good to know. So now we move more into the history of the banjo. What were some of the instruments that led to the creation of the banjo? Way back when, the probably 16, 1700s, from what I've read, what I've gathered, it was since we're called the Aconking. Um, it was pretty much a gourd that they made an instrument out of. They took animal hide and they used that to put it on the top, kind of like the banjo, you have like a drum head. And they used, uh, I believe, three strings, two of them were the main strings and one of them was the drum string. Um, that eventually turned into the banjo as we know it today. It's a good to know. And so, I know you're aware that some of the history of the banjo is problematic. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Um, so the banjo, if it wasn't for the accounting, the banjo probably would not have, this is my opinion, come about. Uh, but it was created. Um, it was brought here, when the slaves were brought here, they kept their tradition and they created a banjo-like instrument. Um, from there, I've read some articles by uh, Jake Blount. Um, he had mentioned that when it came out to the recording studios, when they started making music with us and trying to make you know, people marketable, um, they had two different 
they segregated the music. One was called race music, one was called hillbilly music. Uh, hillbilly music was rebranded as country, and race music was rebranded as R&B. Uh, essentially, both black and white artists were essentially recording the same type of music. But back then, uh, they had to make it marketable, so they invented these categories as hillbilly, traditionally towards white folks, and race towards black folks, which then turned to rhythm blues. Um, so that too, so that the bluegrass, the hillbilly music, was marketed more towards the white folks. And that's what we are, I guess, accustomed to hearing, or we picture it right away. We hear like flats and scrubs, like uh, doing banjos. You think of like the Appalachian Mountains and hillbillies and this type of thing. Um, did that answer your question? Uh, yes. I kind of ran on a little bit, but. All, all true things, though, all true things. It does it definitely answer things. my question. Now, I have another question that is pertaining to that. How can others help spread the truth and decrease misinformation about this instrument? Um, I guess if it's ever brought up, you can just kind of, um, well, first of all, if you're going to correct somebody, make sure it's factual. Try to do it in an unbiased way. Make sure it's factual. Um, and you can just say, hey, by the way, I'm not sure if you're aware of it, but this instrument was originally originated here, um, or anything in general. Good to know. Now I have one last question for you. Sure. What is your favorite thing about the banjo? I like it. Um, it has that percussive sound to it, I guess from the drum head. Um, at the same time, you have the strings, which creates the melody. Um, I like the tone of it, the ring of it, that, you know, clankiness of it, so to speak. Um, I, and I'm just fond of string instruments to begin with. So, and it's different from guitar. I've played guitar pretty much. Like I said, the majority of my life um, in the banjo, um, as well as the mandolin, has that different flair to it. Um, so I'm kind of drawn to it. So yeah, all true things. Uh, it's such a beautiful instrument. It truly is. It truly, truly is. is. It truly is. Thank you. Thank you for coming with me here today. Thank you for having me. I hope you do well. I hope you do well too. All right. Take care. You too. Happy holidays, Merry Christmas. <laughs> Happy, uh, Happy New Year. Happy New Year, too. All right. All right. Thank you. Thanks for that. Disrespect. That was my interview. Um, started laughing a little bit at the end there, but I was just enjoying myself. You know, it was a, it was a fun time for me. So we're going to go on to the making process now, which is this is when I had the, uh, a lot of the real fun with the instrument. Um, so first you want to start, so first you start with the neck. I actually bought a bandsaw for this because no way I was just going to chisel away at a piece of wood just to do it because that would take way too long. So you start with just a normal piece of wood. Um, you're going to want to make the rough cuts. Um, and then I eventually I ended up sanding it and I did chisel at it. Um, and you know, I'll actually show you on the banjo. Um, so the neck is actually three pieces. Uh, we have the main piece, we have a spacer piece, and then we have this piece that goes through the body. Um, they're all glued together. And so uh, that's pretty much the neck. I also drilled the hole in the head, the holes in the headstock uh, for the tuners. Um, the body was actually made out of, out of a salad bowl. I was going for a bit of a take on the uh, gourd banjo, but I don't have a gourd. Uh, and I didn't have enough time to buy a gourd and dry it out because we didn't have that much time for the project. That would take forever. So I bought a salad bowl. Um, and during this, I realized my big mistake is that I bought a salad bowl that was made out of a very hard wood. Um, so when I was t uh, hammering in all these tacks, real pain. Um, but I drilled that hole in the bottom for this dowel to come out of and I uh, cut that hole in the top for the uh, uh, the neck to go in and over there is also the tail piece which is what holds the strings um, yeah 
So applying the skin, this was probably the hardest and most interesting part for me. So I actually had to let, this is real goat skin. Um, I had to let it soak in the, in water for like two and a half hours to get it to be pliable. Cause when you get it, um, it's like hard. Like you could, like it's rolled up and it's hard. And if you dunked someone over the head with it, they would probably, it would hurt a lot. And they might even pass out if you hit them hard enough. I, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, so what you actually end up doing is you put it over the body and what I used, I used dental floss to keep it taut while I hammered in tacks, um, which now keeps it taut. And it actually becomes basically a drum. So if I just cover the strings, you can just hear like, pretty much just a drum on a stick. Um, so this is the finished product. There's a picture up there, but you can just see it. Um, it's fretless. Uh, it has lower tuning than most modern banjos. It's the Gord banjo does. You can't really tune the, um, nylon strings too high or else they just kind of sound crappy. Um, the other banjo that I passed around does have higher tuning with modern day banjo. Um, it has Nile gut strings, which means that they're synthetic gut, um, but they're still made out of nylon. Uh, the, uh, it says poplar body and tailpiece, uh, I meant poplar neck. Um, I'm not sure what type of wood the, this body's made out of, um, but it comes from India, so. Uh, the bridge and the nut are both made out of walnut, and like I said, it's a real goat skin head. So I think it's pretty cool. I'm not really the best at the banjo, um, but I still think it's a pretty cool instrument to have in my collection of like 70 plus. <laughs> um, so the last piece here is how can you get uh, help audience get involved? So uh, I already talked about this with uh, the interview, but uh, like it was said in the interview, a good way to do it is just by correcting people in everyday conversation. Uh, you can bring it up if you're talking about like that era of time or music in general. Um, and you yourself being educated is a big part of that. Because if you make a correction and you're wrong, it's kind of your fault for somebody else believing that something that's wrong. So yeah. Uh, Thank you for my presence, for listening to my presentation. That's a bear. His name is Banjo, and he's playing the banjo. Banjo so. Kazooie. <laughs> <Good. laughs> <But, yeah. laughs>